Live? Hi guys. Hello. How are you doing? Um, yeah, here we are. Q and A. Um, got all the questions from the doobly do. The, the, the yeah, the quest, Yeah, the questions from the questionnaire. Um, we have one times up to date prototype. Um, that's the motion system in all of its current glory. Uh, but, but, but we'll go through that in a minute. Um, but that's that's a design block. Um, these parts for the actual changer are in machining um, at the moment, so I don't have like super final stuff on that, but we'll, we'll go through how the design looks now and how it works, because it's a lot different and a lot cooler. There's hardened steel everywhere, bearings, circlips, the lot. It's, yeah, it's neat. Um, AOB, no. To the questions? To the questions, sorry. Um, First up, Jet coming out with a new board at the end of the year. Can that board be an option for this machine? If this machine, if possible, can you get in touch with them? Yada, yada, yada. Um, yeah, we know the new board's coming. We've talked to them. Um, our focus is on getting this machine out the door with stable electronics, hardware, and software. Bad audio? Can you hear me? Maybe if we pull it closer. Hello? Do you guys hear us well or not? Broken. Okay. okay, cool. All right. Huh. Very rubbish sound. Well, I think we've got plenty of bandwidth going on. Hold fire with the questions. We all get there. Um, all right. We're going to go through the questions that we have because people. Um, have taken the time to sit there and write out questions and they deserve answers. So we will go through this first. Um, we'll try and do that quickly. Hopefully that will inform and answer a lot of the questions that you guys already have. And then we will go on to live questions from the side chat. Um, so about the Jewett board, we are concentrating on going out the door with the stable Jewett board that's on there, that's been on there for a long time and works very well. It sits there. We like it a lot. Yeah. It does the trick. Now, I'm sure that uh, will do a fantastic job with their new board, and I'm quite sure that the design makes a lot of good modular sense for what we want to do. Um, but we're not going to ship something with experimental hardware and electronics and software. We try and minimize variables. Um, so, next one. When are E3D going to release the technical drawings for the mere mortals? Will the motion system and tool changer be open source? And if so, when does it happen? Yes, it is open source um, when it ships. Now, there are really good reasons for that. We are making a standard. If we need to change something on the tool changer um, and we've already released the source, people are going to start manufacturing things to the source and then we're going to the, the first source and that's going to be versions and then the whole thing goes to hell in a handbasket. Um, we have to be very careful about this because we're intending on setting a standard that lasts for quite some time and gets used for many applications. If we have a multitude of beta versions and this was changed and the spacing for that was different, it's going to be a disaster. So we will release the source when we are confident that it works fantastically and that will be after beta 30 when the production machines begin to ship. Um, what I think we should do, however, is perhaps give people like a bounding box, some some kind of guidelines. We can give a, you yeah, know, we've got area. Of area. Yeah. We'll yeah. So we'll give do some guidance on that, but we don't want to release the exact specifics of it. Otherwise, you know, problems as discussed. Um, Power supply, um, someone's mentioning that um, if their calculations are correct, we'll need a power supply beyond 400. Um, yeah, what kind of source? Uh, step, CAD, that kind of thing, drawings, the usual deal. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, people asking about the power supply and four tools, etc. For 400 watt power supply, admittedly, that's fairly close to the limit if you assume that all the motors and the bed and all four tools are all running at once at full pelt, 
then yes, at the moment that kind of never happens. So we get away with using a 400 watt power supply. Um, also, if you use the upcoming, and we've got one on here, the um, mains the mains powered bed for printing peak and high temperature materials, that's powered directly off AC, so the power doesn't come through the PSE. So that makes everything fine. Um, we'll have to look into whatever recommendations we make about which power supply you use um, when it comes to that. Uh, next question, where can you find to buy genuine gates, belts and pulleys? The gates website won't sell to customers and they only sell to industry resellers. So yeah, we will be stocking gates, belts and pulleys for general sale. Um, they should go up on the website in the next few weeks. Um, yeah, all those gates, pulleys in various sizes, your standard matching belt, your six millimeter stuff. Yeah, bearing idler pulleys, both flat and toothed. They're really, really nice. Um, we kind of use them on everything now, uh, including everything everywhere on the tool changers, gates, pulleys. Also, what's pretty cool is we'll be stocking the um, extra wide belt as well. So yeah, they norm normally, um, your standard 3D printer belt is six mil wide. We will be stocking nine and 12. Yeah, and all the pulleys and idlers, yada, yada to go with it. Um, so if you wanna make super stiff, big machines. Will there be a cheaper version? Um, yes, there will be a cheaper version in the future, um, but for now, we're concentrating on getting it out the door. Um, we absolutely want to do a lower cost model. There are lots of ways to reduce cost on this with smarter manufacturing methods. Like, I'm the first person to admit that this is a bit of a bear moth to make. Everything is machined, like almost every single part, the tool changer, every little piece of this is CNC machined, lathe, mill turned, whatever. It's not like, you know, an injection molded, stamped, heavily tooled object. Um, everything is machined. It costs a lot of money. It takes quite a lot of time. It gives you amazing, amazing parts and a gorgeous looking machine. That's what we're shipping first. And then we will look at cost reduction through things like you know, laser cutting, stamping, injection molding. Um, as we progress onto that, our absolute focus is on getting a technology demonstrator out the door um, that is fantastic to work on and use. And that means using expensive machine parts. Um, as I see that there are loads of questions coming in. I want to whiz through the ones that we've gotten before. Then we will get to the questions that are on the, on the side chat. Um, will there be extra ship shipping costs? Yes. Um, how much will they be? I'm not exactly sure. Um, standard FedEx rates around the world for shipping kind of heavy stuff. I don't even know how much it weighs yet. We'll find out. We'll let you know. Um, carbon fiber support has been improved. Yeah, it has. Um, it's improved a bit. Um, it's not like it's 10 times better, but it's a much nicer piece of power. Max load, can the motion system move now? Um, yeah, you can collect it if you want. Um, what max load can the motion system move? I'm not really sure as to that absolute like mass limit. Um, and it's going to more depend on what the kind of impulse is due to acceleration and jerk and tool mass than it will absolute mass. Um, and if there are any tool forces, I imagine that that's probably the, the dynamic forces are going to be more important than the kind of absolute mass of the tool. Um, but I would estimate it's, it, it, it'll take, it will easily take 500, um, 500 grams, no drama. Um, do, 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 do. Um, are we gonna do it in multiple sizes? No, not yet. Um, it's staying in this size, so we get it out the door quicker. Um, and then after we get it out the door, our focus will be on cost reduction, not on multiple versions and sizes. Um, will the dribble extraction with the brush and the vacuum and the sucking off the, the filth come as standard? No, um, we'll just release all the files open source. I mean, it's a solid state relay um, and a Hoover, you know, just any old Hoover or vacuum cleaner as they call it yes. in the rest of the world and some printed parts. So yeah, like it's something you can do yourself quite easily. Will you sell a kit with all electronics and parts needed? Yes, Duet are on it. Um, we're in conversations with those guys. They're gonna be doing a wiring pack, the electronics, everything you need to electronicify the whole thing up and get it going. Um, is the BL Touch included? No longer uses a BL Touch. Um, 
Yeah, we just have a small switch that's attached to the um, the grabber, and then when you remove the tool, then you have enough clearance that you can go and touch off on all the points. So you don't actually need to deploy and undeploy a probe because you can just put your nozzle away and then go and probe with the thing. Yeah. Um, will there be a filament change? I've spoken about this a few talks as like an idea. Um, we're like I would love to have a filament changer dock. I think that would be amazing. Um, it would mean that you could use like any filament in any tool. It's like a super cool concept. Uh, no, we're not designing or building one yet. I think that the best way um, to get something like that up and running quickly would be to maybe use Prusa's new multi-material unit, slap it on the side, have something that you can use to load your tools up. I don't know, I, I pose that as a challenge to the community. I think it will be very cool. Um, how do I know which queue number I have? Um, I have no idea. I don't know the queue numbers at the moment. We will find out. We've got a good like spreadsheet and ordering system. We just haven't gone through and gotten everything out. But quite a few people have asked us that, so we'll find out. And we'll send out an email telling people their order number. Um, will there be a filament runout sensor? If you add one yourself, yeah, for sure. Um, but we're not doing the electronics. so. That's kind of down to you. Will there be power outage recovery? If you use electronics that supports it, then yeah, again, that's electronics supplier. Um, why is the V6 tool two and a half times the price of a standard V6? Uh, yeah, maybe the um, we named it badly, the V6 tool, but the V6 tool is actually a V6. It's a Titan, probably a motor as well. Mm -hmm. And then it comes with all of the tool changing. Yeah, all the coupling mechanism. Etc. So you're getting the whole V6, the whole Titan, all the tool changey bits, etc. Um, will it be possible to use light six hot ends? Um, not by default. Not sure why you'd want to. I don't know. Maybe there's some applications like the PVA, perhaps. Yeah, I see that. Um, no, um, not by default because we are using these threaded. Um, threaded heat sinks and we don't currently do a threaded light six but I mean, that would be such an easy printed little object to design off you take off the thing that accepts the threaded part put on some threaded clampy thing and you'd be away so uh, it, it'd be easy to do yourself how can other tools be mounted uh, designed etc um Yeah, how can you deal with your own tools? Um, basically, we're going to sell tool plates, um, which is the thing. It's the thing that the grabber. Yeah, we'll go into this in a moment. We will sell these bare plates that the uh, the grabber picks up, um, and then you can. It's got we've purposely put an excess of holes on here and space, and that will allow you to basically design your own tools based off of this part. So this contains all the essential coupling, locating, and grabbing parts, and then you can put whatever magical. Yeah. Um, what kind of build surface will it have? Whichever build surface you put on it. Um, will there be a flexible build plate? If you put your own flexible build plate on it. I, I'm sorry, I'm being quite repetitive here, but. I really want to stress that this isn't a consumer 3D printer. This is a technology demonstration platform that allows you to build something that fits your own needs. Um, it's not a all singing, all dancing, everything included 3D printer. This is part project, part tech demo, um, part proof of concept. So if you're expecting a full 3D printer, unsubscribe now um, because that's not what you've signed up for here. Um, will the grabber be available for use on your own printer? Because that goes with the script. Yes, absolutely. We'll be selling all the bits. Um, and so, yeah, the spoon unit asking if you already own a Titan, et cetera, um, can you buy the thing separately? Yes, you'll be able to buy everything separately effectively. Um, there'll be kind of packs of this is a tool changer, this is a motion system. If you read the blog post, it goes into details on that. Um, will you have a pick and place head? Um, for SMT components, and then in another question, um, someone asking about threaded inserts. Like, hell yeah, we really want to do um, a pick and place head. We've got a guy doing one for his final year project. He was an intern here for a while, really talented designer. Um, so I think that that will come to fruition fairly quickly. Um, 
pick and place is a finicky thing because it depends what you want to pick and place. What, like the way to pick and place SMT parts and the way to pick and place threaded inserts is probably a different tool maybe or an adaptation of the tool. So it's an interesting challenge. I reckon there'll be lots of solutions for that, many ways to skin that cat, but we're very excited to do a pick and place head. Um, are extruders included? No, you buy them separately. We do the extruder packages. Um, will beta testers be allowed to talk about the product? Absolutely, yes. Is a power supply included? No, um, the motion system comes as it is. Um, bare, and then you add your own electronics. Duet will be doing an electronics pack. Um, can this easily, so the tool changer parts, be fitted to a parts are required um maybe um so yeah we're, we're selling the tool changer separately and yes you'll be able to fit it onto other machines it depends how kind of compatible and forgiving those machines are to the needs of the tool change remember that the tool changer needs you to be able to move the grabber um into it in the kind of x y direction and pick something up um and you kind of need Hey, Hawk 3D guys. Um, you kind of you need X Y motion on your head in order to locate. Yeah, that'd be a heavy. Yeah, it'd be a, be a that'd be a filthy hack. Um, so yeah, I, I think that we'll see a lot of people adapting the tool changing parts such that they um, can be taken and put on other machines. Like lots of core X Y machines out there. Um, yes. Too. Yeah, um, but lots of core XY machines out there will probably be suitable for attaching the to it. Um, but it's going to be a case by case basis. And I think that machines with a moving bed are going to be particularly difficult. How does your tool changer compare against other multi material systems in regards of ease of use, quality of output, and price? I find it difficult to distinguish between the available options, what they do, and pricing. Um, I think this is a really important point to get across here is that tool changing is a very, very different concept with a very different set of capabilities to what we've seen before. So previously, you know, we have things like pushing multiple filaments out through. Everyone still with us? Some people reporting stream dropping. All right, cool, wicked. Um, yeah, so um, in terms of what makes tool changing different or significant, uh, with previous systems, like say, when you you have one hot end and you remove the filament and change it out with a filament switcher, that is a very different set of capabilities to what we're putting up here. Um, I suppose the core, core things to get across about tool changing is you have unlimited tools, and not unlimited, depending on how you set things up, but you have a, a large number of tools that you can use. Um, they can be loaded with any filament, but also the tools can be different, and they're dedicated to that particular filament. Um, and so we can have different nozzle sizes in a single print. We can have a volcano and a small nozzle size. We can have a flexible dedicated extruder, we can have a hardened steel nozzle. Um, so, and then we can start to add tools that aren't um, hot ends or extruders. All of, yeah, inspection, all of those cool things. Like, it's a very different concept with uh, a much more advanced set of capabilities. There's a bit of additional complexity in there, um, but tool changing is a really big and different step forward. Um, Next page. Whew, there's a lot on here. Um, which software have we been using? We're still using Simplify 3D and the Duet firmware. Um, Simplify 3D handles things pretty acceptably. Uh, you create the processes, you assign them to the models, you do the standard things. It can be a bit fiddly at times, um, but yeah, it, it works decently. Um, yeah, and I, some people saying, uh, you know, Obviously, that 
integrated CAD CAM packages really need to get in on the slicer game, like Fusion 360, where the slicer put in it combined manufacturing with CAM, and so that would be off the hook. Uh, but bear in mind, these are really non-trivial problems that we're talking about, really non-trivial problems. Um, and they're kind of out of scope for what we are looking to achieve with this. Um, our hope is to increase the adoption and acceptance of such that um, those kinds of systems come. Like if we build it, they will come. Uh, and I think that true across the board, throughout the hardware manufacturing space, there are lots of manufacturers that are already super excited about adopting this system. And there, you know, there's going to be ramifications for that in software and electronics, firmware slices, etc. Um, so it'll happen slowly but surely because there's a very hard problems we're talking about. Um, um, cool. Can you explain more about direct drives for flexible filaments? Um, yeah, we want to do one at the moment. We're just concentrating on getting it out with V6. Um, that's all we're concentrating on doing. Get it out the door with V6, shipping, printing, and changing tools. Then we can design cool tools. Um, have you found a solution for the wiring mess involved in tool changing? Um, yeah, so the new wiring system, great loops of uh, steel oh, from the rail core guys. Yeah. Uh, from the uh, Midwest, like earlier in the year, they had uh, metal, well, they tie wraps that are. That yeah, are, like spring steel. Yeah, spring. Like spring steel, yeah. From, uh, yeah, so that's what we're pro proposing to put in there. It's so they keep the kind of felt it twisting. Straight. And it means that when you swap the tools, you don't get crossed wires and it doesn't snag. It just works very well. Yeah. Um, and everything really looks a lot neater than it did on previous prototypes. Um, and we are, it's yet to be finalized, but Duet have kind of have a really neat solution for unplugging the hot ends easily. Yeah. Um, and so if you want to change a tool, you just pull it off the machine and unplug a few tools, put the new one on, plug the new tool in. Um, no, like rewiring. It's going to be very quick. It's supposed to be very easy to use. Uh, obviously, if you've got lots of tools, you don't want to have to rewire everything every time you change yeah. a different tools. So. Is it like a two, three minute job to change a tool? Surely, yeah. Yep, yep. Just pull it off the, the dock, yeah. and plug and plug back in again. All right, we're finally getting towards the end of the questions. Um, what made you choose a cantilever bed? Lots of high drama on this one, and, and uh, Chicken Little Sky is falling. Um, so basically, we, you know, we've tried a lot of bed configurations. We tested this, and it works exceptionally well. Um, if you create a cantilever bed system that is good um, and stiff, they work extremely well. Um, there are lots of cantilever bed systems out there that are not stiff, and they are sloppy, and they do not work extremely well. Um, maybe we can actually just show them the bed. Okay. And not like, uh, so this is a six millimeter thick aluminium plate. This is bent, what, four? Four, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and at the back, at the back. Can we spin it around? Uh, yeah. And that is connected with this. Oh, there's a lot of reflection in here. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, there's this machine block here, the one piece, um, yeah. solid, solid chunk. 30, 30 mil, yeah, piece of aluminium. Yeah. Into which the, the lead screw goes. It's massively overkill. Um, mm -hmm. And then it attaches to this enormous highway rail yeah. um, that's bolted on, which are just absurdly So if we spin it back around. It's, it's, um, it's probably the stiffest set axis that I've ever used or seen or experienced. Uh, it's just, it just, yeah, it's, there, there are no problems there. Um, we've done the many point Z axis things with two motors and uh, four, like, we've played with all of those systems. You get tramming issues, alignment issues, binding issues. Um, with this, you have you have effectively one linear actuator that's extremely stiff and it's moving one thing. Um, so it, 
but also kinematically it's, it's more kind of perfect because you have one linear system defining the linear position of the bed and that is it and then if everything else is sufficiently stiff thereafter then everything else will do its job um so yeah z axis is fine um another question about um inserts um and pick and place which we're absolutely on as discussed before um Will it be possible, yeah, this is one that comes up a lot. Will it be possible to start purging or heating or otherwise preparing the tool before grabbing it um, such that, yeah, because our tool changes, they take a little while, right? Because you go off, you brush off the thing, you drop it off, you wait for the other one to get ready, you pick it up, you brush it off itself. Uh, we've got kind of an excessive tool change script that could be the last one. And then you purge it out and you get it ready and then you go off and you print. Um, yeah, that absolutely doesn't need to be the case. It's just a small software problem um, such that you, in the firmware, the scripts, or there is some G code to otherwise notify the electronics and trigger a script in the duet such that it can get the tool ready. Um, there is no electrical or hardware impediment to that happening. It's just a matter of software. Um, yeah. Yeah it, it, yeah, it just needs a little more planning. Yeah, a bit more look ahead or an indication from the slicer that tool changes coming up. Um, I mean, honestly, you could write a Python script that post processes your G code, looks for your T0 command, and then backs up, like passes up through the G code, stacks up how long they'll take. If you say, like, get the tool ready two minutes before, and then you insert a G code, like the notification about two minutes up in the G code and preheat it. It's it's not a difficult problem. It just requires a bit of fiddling. Um, and da, 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 da. if you only use one tool at a time, why not make a sim simple stepper selector like the Prusa multi material instead of requiring the GX expansion? Well, because then you wouldn't be able to punch your tools while they're waiting in the dock, right? Um, that and the duet expansion board is really really good um, yeah. and just works straight away and works out of the box and is available on the general market. It's not just the, uh, the heater control, the I owe for fan management. I mean, there's a, you can have, there's yeah. just so much more that you can do with it. Yeah, it's very capable and I thoroughly recommend it. Yeah. And yeah, I agree with Tony that it's a small software problem. There's nothing David can't handle. Like, yeah. They'll get that sorted, don't worry. Um, I have faith. Do, 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 do. Um, again, does E3D have plans to sell tools that? Um, are compatible but aren't hot ends. Yes, um, once we've shipped the first thing with the V6s, we'll get onto tool design. Um, how will we deal with firmware and software to integrate complex tool heads such as camera spindle pick and place? Um, short answer, we kind of won't. Um, we kind of won't. It falls very much to the implementer to look at these things. We'll obviously be encouraging, assisting, doing whatever we can. Um, and some of these things can be achieved with kind of simple software hacks that we might implement ourselves and release um, as references. But yeah, we, we have a lot of high-minded plans about this. And yeah, we don't have all of the answers and all of the solutions. Um, but we think that once we create a platform from which people can build and like, you know, you need that. Little, little stepping stone in order to get people going. Once we have that, then I think that the community will make progress. Um. Mm -hmm. Have you experimented? Oh yeah, someone asking about do we need to add more brace into the frame with a blah blah parrot? No, no, it's it's what I, you, know, you can punch that machine in there. There's no. It, there just there just isn't any for it's no. yeah there's no need for extra bracing I promise um, is the upcoming platform compatible with the existing big box style build plates yes yeah, exactly the same um, what's the biggest size heat bed you can fit inside well it's 300 by 200 that's what we designed it for so it takes 300 by 200 beds that's kind of the long and the short of it there are two bed designs that we're 
doing for it. One's your standard PCB heater, um, and one is the super high power mains powered bed for printing super polymers like Peak and Altam and the like. Um, do you have plans to expand the motion system to a larger frame? Not yet. Um, we're sticking with this, but we're selling the tool changing parts and the source will be open. If you want to derive it and make a bigger one, crack on. Um, we may look at that in the future too, but it's not our, um, it's not our first calling right here. Um, we want to get tool changing working really well. Making it bigger doesn't really assist in moving the technology forward. Like that's a simple job. It can definitely be done. There's no fundamental research to occur there. It's just stretching the printer, right? Um, our objective here is to research and implement tool changing in a way that can be widely adopted um, with a variety of useful tools. Getting distracted by making bigger machines doesn't move us towards that goal. Um, yeah, would it be possible to implement a rotary or linear slot system or carousel or tool magazine to allow more than two, uh, four tools, which is the current loadout on the machine to be fitted? Yes, but it'll take some work. Um, so the way we, th what needs to happen there for this to occur is you have the issue that the tool head is tethered by both the wiring and the filament. And in order to be able to you put your tools back in a in a rack somewhere or in some rotary magazine carousel what have you like a cnc machine you need to be able to detach both of those things both the filament and the electronics the electronics is easy you use pogo pins or something and off she pops um, but for the filament it means that a prerequisite to this is basically the filament loading dock um, which is again something probably a lot like a hacked prusa mmu so yeah, we expect that to happen in due course. Um, we're kind of looking to do the pogo pin thing in the future where the electronics couple through the tool changer mechanism. Um, but for now, uh, it's not quite possible, but it's tantalizingly close. Um, yeah, another one about the slicer, we've been using slicer um, we've been using Simplify 3D. Honestly, there's not really much reason why you could use any other slicer there. Well, uh, as long as you have to Simplify 3D to get it to work just by setting up each tool as a different profile yeah. and specify it that way. I guess if you can do that on similar slices, there's no reason why you can't. Yeah, I mean, really, the firmware takes care of all the tool changing gut when the scripts internally. So yeah, the Turek does a very good work of uh, changing tools just on T0 and T1 or stuff like that if you want to get right down into it yeah. and a couple of people asking about tool changer bits um yeah they'll they'll be available um to buy once we go to production they won't be available during the beta because we've only ordered enough for 30 machines of everything if that makes sense um and so there's a kind of one-to-one -one relationship between numbers of tool changers and printers and beta testers so we won't be able to pull bits out of that during beta, um, but later on, when we're in production, we will sell um, all the bits a la carte. Um, yeah, what are the dimensions of the base plate on the outside? 540 by 540. Which is big and chunky. Um, and that's all for the It's not that big box where the, uh, the spools are on the outside. They're all inside the frame on these, hang on these things. I don't really have a spool here, but the, yeah, there's yeah, nothing the external to the, to the outside of the, of the machine. So it's, yeah, it's all enclosed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're able to put them on your rail floor. You just yeah, have to be, have patience, have patience. Mm -hmm. Once they pass beta, then, which won't be long, uh, you know, it will be a, a, a four week phase. Once they pass beta, we'll be spooling up production in a big way. Um, and ordering in lots of parts, and then yeah, if you want to put them on your rail car, crack on a tool changer on its own, and yeah. away you go. Yeah. Um, when will it be available to order for people who don't want to reserve a place in the queue? Once we've shipped all the ones in the queue, basically. Um, how long will that take? I'm not entirely sure. Hopefully, we don't encounter issues along the way. 
getting everything out well before Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, um, and being into just a normal ordering cycle. Um, we're releasing the CAD models once we're out of the beta phase. Um, so, um, will there be a standard firmware software for people who just want to get on with things and not do the coding and scripting, etc.? Um, yeah, we'll, we'll release a standard yeah, we'll, implementation. Yeah, we'll have to build a machine to test everything that works. So we'll release everything that comes with that. Uh, firmware, any SDLs that might be required, just out of curiosity to build the yeah. tools. Uh, DXFs for side panels, back panels, the whole lot will be available. The S3D profiles. Uh, S3D profiles, yeah, they'll all be on there. Firmware scripts. Firmware scripts, be a, the whole thing. The whole yeah, thing. yeah, we have full, full reference implementation of this machine as we use it and enjoy it. Um, and then you can go and <laughs> Go wild. Um, doo -doo -doo. Does the tool changing mechanism afford to include the. Oh, I'm sorry, this is a hard question. Does the tool changing mechanism plus four docs include the hot end side plates? If not, will I be able to buy these plates without a V6 or other toilet? I think that in summary, the answer is yes, you'll be able to buy these tool plates that the tool grabber picks up um, individually as you like, in summary. Um, and then the final question, which we get a lot and we want to be very clear about, will there be a complete system as well, ready to print? The answer is no. <laughs> um, it's a reference implementation. It's a technology de demonstration. Um, hi from the UK. Um, it is not a consumer 3D printer. Please don't expect a consumer 3D printing experience. That's not what you're getting here. You're getting a challenge. Build instructions really in, screw in these 15 bolts and five feet. And that, that's how much it takes to put the frame together. Yeah, um, as detailed in the blog post, yeah. the, so on the top, there's two there. Now I've got to get my cameraman skills out. Yeah, there's those two, there's those four, and there's four there, and then another two there. That's the top plate, and you have the same on the bottom, except a couple of them are replaced with four feet. So the rest of it's all pre-assembled. So this the top plate's all ready for you. The Z axis is all ready for you. Actually, you just need to put another four screws to bolt the bed onto the to the Z axis. That's it. It so, should yeah. take you, it takes me. But there will be instructions. Yes, there will be instructions. But it takes, it takes seven minutes to put the whole thing together. Um, uh, obviously, if you're putting in electronics and all of those bits and pieces, it will take a little bit longer. Uh, but it's, it's certainly not the three or four days of the big box. That's uh, learned from that. You may be looking at three or four hours at absolute maximum if you have a cup of tea or something in between as well. Uh, we're using Fusion 360 with the CAD. There's no requires electronics to be completed. No commissioning that requires. No, it's you just with the wiring kit. You should just it should be dare I say it plug and play, not plug and pray. Um, it should all just be plug it all together. Uh, the wires will all be the correct length. All of the key. There'll be no soldering. It should be just plug it. Uh, yeah. Power it on and away you go, and it should just especially if you're using the pre assembled hot end. Yeah, tool if you're using that. the proper tools, you're buying the wiring pack that we're going to be supplying. If you're going off piece, then obviously, yeah, yeah then you get something else that takes a little bit longer. Yeah, no crimping, um, pre assembled wiring harness ready to go. Are you going to have an EU warehouse when if Brexit goes through? So, blah blah blah, 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 blah. Um, even if they go to an EU warehouse, there'll still be taxes because you just ship them yeah. onto the warehouse. I mean, it's. I, we're hoping for a decent trade deal, but let's not get into politics. Um, <laughs> Kinematic has enough precision change tools with 0 0.25 or 0 0.1 millimeter nozzles. Yeah, we're yes. thinking about less than five microns repeatability on the, the first prototype. So I think 250 or 100 mics should be more than attainable. Do you have plans for a similar system for 
the printing plate to be hot swappable. Um, I wanted to do something like this, but Mark Forged and Voxelate have a pair of very strong patents on kinematically coupled bill plates. Um, so that is tricky. It would be really great to have a kinematically coupled bill plate. Um, if you're joining late, you, there'll be a recording. So, um, so yeah, that would have been nice, uh, but yeah, no deal at the moment. Um, so I'll we'll have to look at alternatives. Um, weight limit on the tool head. Um, yeah, well, let's talk about the tool head. Um, so I don't have a fully machined version. Um, yeah, component OEMs, it's still high wind, it's still gates. Uh, oh, there's one thing, the Z rail, high wind has um, a six month, six, nine? It's six to 10 months worth uh, for, for the Z rail. Yeah, so we're looking at SKF, Bosch Rex, Roth, um, I forget yeah. others, proper, proper, like proper bearing suppliers. Um, that will provide a, a equivalent quality rail for that. Um, the rest is all highway. But yeah, it's unfortunate about the rail, but I'm sure that the big players in bearings like Bosch and SKF, and, and they can all, I'm sure it'll be fine. We've got a bunch of uh, alternate quotes and suppliers. Um, yeah, we'll talk about, lots of people have been asking about um, basically flipping the thing upside down so the belt <laughs> I, I think it you know I think it would actually just work dare, dare I say it because the XY system works independently of the <coughs> you could just mount the tool changer kind of upside yeah, down yeah I think that would work. <laughs> work I mean like these these work that way and you might run into problems with. You might, uh, you might, yes. You look. You're gonna hit. You're gonna hit that. You might need to reprint something here yeah, to, to, to just lift this out the way a bit. Or like flip a rail. Yeah, you could. Yeah, hey, you could actually put this on upside down. That would work, wouldn't it? Would it not? Something that. Like it, it looks eminently yeah. possible. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, if you flip the top plate, something like that. Um, interesting to see. It would be very possible. And there's nothing to prevent you up top from just literally taking the whole thing and no, top to turning it. Um, you might have to do some rejigging for exactly how the tool chain. How good is layer between two different materials? Um, it depends on the two materials, right? PLA on PLA, it's so like PLA to PLA. Um, PLA to ABS doesn't stick, but um, PLA to TPU does stick. Um, material adhesion is polyester witchcraft, trial and error. Okie dokie. Um, so, yeah, let's talk about the three spacing of tool hands is electronically controlled, yes. Um, and some other people are asking about how you calibrate the tools. That is also in software as well. So if you can pack in three tiny tool heads right next to each other on one side, you're golden. Like you just change the pickup positions in the, in the firmware and you go grab them. Um, and if you have a long tool and a short tool, you know, a V6 and a Volcano, that's all just fine. You just change the off, you just change the offsets. Um, Yeah, why did we go with the cantilever bed? Uh, we talked about that quite a lot earlier, so go back and read the recording. Um, I, I think that the price breakdown is pretty well explained on the blog post. If there isn't anything that's clear there, um, do do shout. But for the you know for the motion system part, you get all the parts that make the print head move. For the tool changer, you get everything that grabs the heads and for each tool, you get the thing that the grabber grabs. Uh, it's that simple. There's three kind of things, and you buy. Uh, the yeah, and you and you buy the electronics separately. Uh, it's that's kind of all there is to it, and you buy whichever parts you want. Um, if you want to use different electronics, don't buy the electronics kits. If you want to build your own tools, don't buy the tools. Um, if you just want the tool changer, 
to put on your rail core than just by the tool changer. Um, yeah, servers. Yeah, 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 we've actually got some O drives. Yeah, we've got some O drives. of stuff to do. And we got um, the, the what do you call it? The dynamic things? No, the there's the O drives, I and mean, then there are things that go on the back of the, oh, the smart the, step. Uh, yes, the smart step. What are they called? You know, for the life of me, I can't remember the name now. Yeah, I told you on the yeah. board. Yeah. Oh, those things they go on the back. Mechadrinos. That's it. Mechadrinos, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, would love to. Um, that that would be badass. Um, also clear paths as well. I wish they did clear paths in Lima 17. Those would sell like hot cakes. They would sell like a hot damn. Um, yeah, proprietary, but they, they work really well, those clear paths. Um, so I, yes, we would love to do servos. At the moment, Steph Motors work just tickety boo. So um, all right, there'll, be a, there'll, be a, there'll be a bomb that you'll need to get yeah. for ancillaries for like screwing on servo uh, titans maybe fitting the electronics on them I mean, not, there's not many bits I'll try and do it see what we can come yeah. up with the system is able to support up to 450 degrees C yes um, higher on the 500 on the hot end on the hot end yeah the bed depending on which bed you go for. Yeah, if you go for the high power bed, you'll hit 200 to yeah. 250, no drama. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you with the copper. Uh, okay, you won't, you'll need copper for that. Yeah. Um, and the, we've got, they're, they're about to come out. Um, we've got these heater cartridges that have much longer. We, we discovered that our standard heater cartridges, when you really give them a hot supper at 450 um, for like 100 hours, they, they do have a higher failure rate. Um, so we've got these new heater cartridges with, I, I don't know what they do inside of them, but uh, it's a pixie, black magic, <laughs> witchcraft. Yeah, I think they use Canthal instead of Nichrome or something. Anyway, um, they last longer at high temperatures. Uh, Mr. Moffat again asking, yeah, um, pick and place we chatted about earlier, but yes, we have plans. It's something we really want to do. And yes, the machine has quite a lot of... Um, there's space and there's capacity in terms of carrying capacity mm -hmm. to pick up heavier stuff. 500 grams is no drama. Um, it will probably go to more than that. I'm not you tested. Have to, have to run a bit slower the, the heavier stuff you're carrying. So like yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, system servos for long life. Um, our system is use a really good servo. Um, we've got one that we know is good for very, very many cycles. Um, yeah, it's only powered on when it does the switching thing. The mechanism is built such that it doesn't need any retaining force. Um, sorry, so many questions, so little time. Um, Hello, dragon. And a costume pie. Pika costume pie. Pie costume. <laughs> um, thermal distortion on the bed. Yeah, we um, there are actually some features built into the yes. um, into the beds themselves. Um, into the beds, they have these little slots that allow the bed to expand without warping, and we have um, we have these special standoffs. I think those ones are ceramic. These ones are ceramic. The ones we've got going are. Uh, Polyphenol sulfone. Yeah, yeah. Poly, 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 polyphenol Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, which are good to 250. Um, what about a laser cutter tool? I, I think we probably won't do that because, um, <laughs> yeah, I like to see. I like my eyes. Leave that as an exercise to the user. Yeah. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, oh. Uh, what are the transparent sides out there? Um, impact resistant acrylic. Um, and uh, <laughs> how are they attached? <laughs> so, yeah, Greg gets in a lot of trouble for this, but um, if you want to wind up the accounts department, Greg, Greg has actually used <laughs> all of it. 30, 30 nozzles hold it together. 
yeah, that's not actually the final solution. We we did we had some scrap nozzles. So <laughs> yes, they're they're attached with T nuts. Um, currently, we're scrap prototype. V6 nozzles. So M6 T nuts. M6 nuts. Third series, yeah. Yeah, we have some screws, but I didn't have any. And also, I mean, why wouldn't you put nozzles in there if you've got a big tub of them? We've got nozzles, right? <laughs> yeah, those nozzles. The, the back plate will have some screws on it to get to the electronics but i didn't have any uh, but i did have a big tub of, of unused nozzles so. should we talk about yeah, how the, the lantern has changed um so this is just um an sla uh printed mock-up um so the new version has a lot of voodoo in it um new hotness so this is where the whole spring them a thing pretensioning bit um, attaches here. So you would imagine something that doesn't exist there. Um, and that is applying your rearward spring force to this. So this part here wants to be pulled back in that direction. Um, to account for all of that, there's a, there's a thrust bearing that isn't in here, but goes in here. Um, and then there's axial bearings, flange bearings up front. Um, the weird um, DMLS part has been changed for a nice simple cross pin that's uh, retained by a grub screw. Uh, yeah, Greg is helpful. Yeah, we'll just pop that. Oh, oh bits everywhere. Is that good on there, right? Yeah. And that's there. Conveniently, you've got it. Good. So, yeah, there's a little thrust bearing that goes in there. Um, that's thrust bearing thing. I mean, no, that's it's going to be a little bit thicker than that. We've only put it together for the demonstration. Yeah. So everything that you see in uh, green is CNC milled aluminium. Um, and then, there's, yeah, there's a little circlet on here that retains that. And this is held together with these custom standoffy parts. So we have that, and the servo gearing stuff occurs inside of here. And that, um, yeah, so Formlabs Form 2 is a really nice machine. Um, and no, there are no plastic parts really in the build chamber. Um, anyway, not getting distracted, I want to do a tour of the um, the tool. This is a grabber. Um, and so the servo actuates this through 90 degrees. Uh, instead of the nasty aluminum, um, Instead of the nasty aluminium grooves, we've now got hardened steel um, dowel pins uh, as the kinematic locating elements up here and down here. And so there's actually a little recess in there into which your ball can sit. I'll just let everyone recover if they're having audio issues. And so what occurs is that the servo is able to actuate this through 90 degrees, and that is what locks the whole affair into the tool. Um, so then we have the tool plate. Um, and again, this is CNC machined um, aluminium. Um, and this part here is actually a press fit insert. Um, so this is what we call the ramp ring. So this is what the, um, this is what that uh, cross pin goes into um, and it's very hard to see, but you can see the ramp surfaces there, the kind of helical mm -hmm. surfaces, um, the kind of wonky warped looking bits, but they are, that's all intentional. And so what occurs here is that the this is as such, um, and this goes in here and you can see that these balls go into in between the two pins and they go into the recess. And so that goes on like such, and then this rotates and that locates everything. Um, and the spring force is pulling everything that way, um, giving the coupling the preload force that it requires. And that um, is our tool changing system. Um, and so we apply a bit of spring force, then we can apply a, a 
uh, deflection and it snaps back into place. So it has really nice fault tolerance and, and misalignment pickup capability. Um, and again, it's hardened steel on hardened steel contacts. Um, the, the ramp ring is a separate press fit part because we don't want to make that out of aluminium because aluminium is not the finest bearing surface material in the world. Um, so this part will be made out of some bearing bronze brass. So it'll be a kind of brass steel contact, bronze steel contact. Mm -hmm. um, so that is what the such that because this part is spring preloaded and bears plainly on there um, and in order to not wear or kind of otherwise mush the surface with the spring preloaded hardened steel pin that would be a, a nice bearing surface made of bronze um, and really that kind of shows how it goes uh, how heavy can the tools be Okay, we've asked people have been asking this quite a few times throughout. Um, I don't really know, but it's quite a lot um, at least 500 grams. The, re oh, the really neat thing about having the press fit ramp rings, right? And also the. Uh, uh, how do I put this back together? I've gone too excited. Uh, so, what's neat here is that all of this comes apart so easily that should you desire to you can actually change out the ramp ring for one that has more aggressive um like uh, a high helix angle and so therefore pulls more on the shaft displaces the shaft more and so that will get you a higher clamping force um but on the on the kinematic coupling and therefore a higher load bearing capacity additionally back here um the spring is really easy to change out. So if you want to go for a higher, um, I believe there's, you, uh, you can adjust, there's a thing, screw, no? There's a screw on the back, but it's just to hold the spring. Yeah, it won't allow you to change the spring, but you can, you can that's it, you, add, adjust it. You, you can adjust it by adding packing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a normal RC servo. It fits between, it kind of goes all up in this here. Um, uh, it won't fit, but it, it goes in that hole kind of there. Um, you kind of get the idea. Is that there? This face is in, and then there is a, a, a three to one, uh, three to one, two to one, two to one, two to one gear set, um, so um, spur gear set that takes the, the rotation from the server and translates it to the shaft. So in the middle here, we're missing our um, gear. Oh look, we've got a gear, look at that. No, it's not gold anymore. Maybe we should, maybe we should paint, paint this gold. Oh, we could do a titanium nitride coating for additional wear resistance and lubricity. No, that would be a waste of money. <laughs> but it would be cold. Um, all right, so let's try and. So the distance is not right. It should be. There's no way I'm going to be a sem able to assemble this live on the street. Oh, uh, no. No. Go on. All right. Push it in. Shove it in. Yeah. Is it in yet? It's in. It's in like sin. Oh, yes. Um, so there we have it. Um, and so the servo itty bitty gear sits here. Um, how are the dowel pins held in the aluminium? Yeah, press fit. Um, yeah, hold fast on the TIN DLC coated nozzles. Just, just you wait, just you wait. Um, the switch, precise measurements. I mean, the well, the IR sensor is less precise than a switch or a BL touch, um, and the BL touch and a switch are comparable. Go see Tom Sanmagro's video um, that compares the repeatability of assorted coupling. Coupling? Zero EN stoppy objects. Yeah, uh, he's got a great video on that. 
Um, and yeah, switches are good, is the example. They're also very cheap. Um, would it be anodized? I don't think so. As a rule, we don't really, unless we're making things gold, unless we're making things gold, unless we're making things gold, and we don't tend to anodize them. It's not really on brand for E3D. Um, there's, yeah, like you said, no, no reason to anodize. Um, just, yeah, smash your pins in. Um, yes, it does. Yeah, steel. Oh, the server, yeah, internally, it's all metal gears. the gears here are all metal gears. There's there's really not much plastic in this whole machine. I mean, I love plastic. I'm a huge plastic nerd, but uh, there's a time and a place. And when you're building a machine like this, that's not it. Um, do, 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 do. Um, yeah, we could anodize it to make it pretty, but uh, anodizing takes time and money. You know, it's a whole separate process. Mm -hmm. uh, the machine components will do just fine. And you can't say that you want it anodized and you want it sooner or the same go. Okay. Is, yeah. Reality takes precedence, I'm afraid. God, I love this thing. It's great. Mm -hmm. um, so that is that. Do, 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 do. Love it. Um, it's glorious. Alrighty. Um, Who's it taken using the nozzle for bed leveling over a switch? Yeah. Um, so for the longest time, I've really wanted to um, uh, probing through the kinematic coupling so that when you your tool comes along and you apply a force to your tool, it causes a slight displacement on the kinematic coupling. Um, and you don't even need to get it to disconnect. You can actually detect that touch by measuring the, by basically applying a small current through the balls and the pins, so that the ball landing on the two pins completes a circuit. Um, definitely want to do that, but not yet. Um, so, and I think that that will, using the nozzle in that way, would work extremely well. Um, I'm not a big fan of the electrical contact probing because there's so much carbonized gunk on the end and then people end up putting electrical contact pads on the bed and it's like well what's the point because the pads aren't anyway yeah it's not really my thing um, have we tested it with mega volcano no um but it will just work with super volcano super volcano is just the longer v6 i guess it's no drama oh, same deal for volcano um and pretty much every other nozzle out there um so it will just work with those by default. Um, yeah. Uh, change my mind. The use of the spring precludes the use of CNC. Um, yeah, effectively, it does preclude the use of um, full-blown subtractive manufacturing CNC. The machine's not designed for it. I mean, it's a belt-driven, small stepper motor-driven machine. It's not a CNC machine. It's not for cutting. Um, However, this is a fairly rigid system and you can apply a very high preload to it. So you can kind of bend the rules a little bit. Um, and so when we talk about adding a subtractive twirly gig cutter, we're not talking about adding, you know, a, like a, a huge like collar spindle affair. We're talking about taking a tiny, tiny plastic cutting bit um, using a very like, yeah, we're talking exactly like a 250 micron layer, um, and you're removing like a hundred, hundred mic off the edge, like a plastic. The chip load here is not like we're not talking about very significant um, chip loads, tool deflection forces, or anything like that. Um, so when we talk about adding a subtractive cutter and doing hybrid manufacturing. That's what we're referring to. We are by no means insinuating that this will be a CNC machine, um, because as you rightly state, it will not. Um, it will not function as a CNC. It will. Or it definitely won't cut metal, and it probably won't even really cut blocks of plastic into shapes that you want. Um, but what we think it will do effectively is a, basically a subtractive finishing process, dimensioning trimming process. Um, um, do, 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 do. What the solution is 
Does it taste good? Uh, what solutions exist for increased tool storage behind the single row at the back? Uh, none. Um, but as discussed earlier, I really hope to see Carousel's magazine and things like that once we get the yeah, linear actuator. Um, but yeah, that requires the decoupling of the electronics and the filament for the tools. Uh, any printer manufacturer, oh, it's very long, it's been a long week. Any printer manufacturers partnering to adopt the tool chain? Yes, that is all. <laughs> um, quite a few, actually. Um, yeah, it, it's pretty cool. Really good response from companies that you would have heard of. Um, so quite excited for that. Um, and yeah, that's the whole point of this thing, right? We're here to, you know, our dirty secret plan is we want to sell four times as many hot ends. So the more machines out there that have tool changes on them, the master plan. So the more um, companies we can get to adopt tool changing, the better in our eyes. And it's just cool. Um, so we are, this is here to go to machine manufacturers and tinkerers and machine designers so that they can implement these standards on their machines. How much moving mass is the tool plate adding to the effector? I have no idea. Um, grams. grams, they're very thin shelled out aluminum parts. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, it, it, if you crash it, it does spring on the coupling. It's a really nice feature, right? So you're going along and you hit something and the coupling will just pop out and then the spring force allows it to pop back in. So you have to put in kind of amount of hot end suspension because uh, you've got quite a wide capture distance. So you've got a lot of potential deflection before you're out of the like recapture distance. Um, so it's a pretty nice feature if you, you, know, you have a curling out back into it then the hot end will just deflect and snap back into place very efficiently um right we're getting low on time um so what is it um even for normal printer the tool changer yeah, I mean, the um, and the motion system makes a great 3D printer without the tool changing as well. It's something I really like to stress and is often overlooked. Um, you can buy the motion system and not put the tool change, right? And just mount a V6 on there or what have you. Um, and you have a very incredible 3D printer. Um, yeah, as we've said a few times, it's open source. The source will be released when it goes to production. Um, Cool. Right, I think that mm -hmm. kind of brings us to a close. Anybody got any questions that were well answered? Um, I, think you want to... I suppose uh, one thing is we were hanging around on Discord here and there, answering a few questions, which is a really nice. Um, platform for chat, I try and get on there when I, when I have a few moments. If you want to join and ask questions and chat about what you can do with this machine on Discord, you can go to that link. Um, leave time after TCT is, yeah, unclear, depends if you're in the beta phase or not. It also depends on the beta phase things. So that's why I want to make promises about leave time right now. Um, so, both the printer manufacturers, I think we're probably a year out mm -hmm. um, before actual yeah, mainstream printer manufacturers get there. Um, all right. Say bon. Mm -hmm. All righty. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Bye -bye. Have a good weekend.